Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca Vardol with the Mended Collective and this is Jordan Dancer. Hello. And today we're going to talk about theology and what this means and why it is important for us. This is kind of a popular word that's being thrown around right now and um, for some of us, including me, this is a difficult topic and so I know that this is a passion of yours, it's sure. something you enjoy talking about, so let's dive into that today. Sure, so theology, like you say, is a word that people throw around mm -hmm. at places that kind of seem random yeah. <laughs> at times and where it may not be very pertinent as we might say. Sure. Theology just on its outside set is the study of the things of God. Mm -hmm. That could be the study of the character of God. That could be the way God acts. It could okay. be all manner of things. And one of the words that, that gets used a lot that I think about is really helpful in the, in the Bible is mm -hmm. the idea of doctrine. Mm -hmm. And okay. so this is the teaching. This is the facts, the basic understanding, and the principles that undergird all of Christianity. Okay. So this is about who God is, yeah. what he requires of us. Sure, that's um, part of it. And the teachings and things like that that we can learn from in the Bible. Is that right? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so how does that apply to us today? How do we navigate that? Sure, sure. Well, if you want to look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, there's a really powerful passage in there that I think is super helpful. Okay, 1 okay. Timothy chapter 4, verse number 16. It says, uh, Paul speaking to Timothy here says, to take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Mm. Continue in them, for in doing this you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Mm. So the facts of God mm. are so important. And we need to understand this. And notice here he doesn't say, you should take heed to the doctrine. It's kind of important, but if you sure. if you miss it, it's it's not a big deal. He says, if you do that, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Mm -hmm. So our salvation and our coming to know God is critical here. Mm -hmm. If we think about it, we all have some level of theology, the sure. way we think about God. Everyone has that. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks about God and the universe in a certain way. Some mm -hmm. may think there is no God, and that's their theology. Some people may think they're their own personal mm -hmm. God. But ultimately, we need to understand God correctly. Mm -hmm. We must understand God correctly because we need to understand his character and who he is. So understanding fundamentally what theology is from the Bible is important to us because if we don't know who God is and, and what he's about, if you will, then we can't properly follow him. Sure. Is that if you, right? Yeah, if you think about theology, in some sense, it, it stands as the basis to faith. Mm -hmm. in, in Hebrews chapter 11, it talks about whoever comes to God must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Okay. If we want to have faith in God, if we want to have a relationship with God, we have to believe, obviously, that he exists, but we also have to trust his character in mm -hmm. order that we could come to him. Trusting his character. Can you tell me more what that looks like? What does trusting his character look like? Sure. Well, I think this is a, a huge branch of theology. There's sure. all sorts of different uh, subsets and places where people think about this, but the nature of God, mm -hmm. that God is loving, yes. that God is is kind, that God is gracious and compassionate, and other, other wonderful facets mm -hmm. of God's nature and his character, like he knows everything, that he can do anything. We might call these sovereignty or omniscience or uh, omniscience impotence, things like this, understanding what that is and what that means give us a, gives us a greater appreciation for the wonder and glory of our God. Mm. And so would you say that knowing those things about God and being able to grasp them helps us better serve him? Yeah, absolutely. If you think about a lot of the, the, the New Testament books that you read, especially the epistles, um, there'll be sections where the writer, a lot of times Paul or whoever it is, will give a word about the nature of God, about mm. the character of God, about the mission of God, and then he'll say, therefore, mm. or he'll say, because of this, or, and so now, everything we do as Christians is an outpouring of our belief about God. Yes. I think sometimes we, there's a real danger that we try to divorce you know, the practical from the theoretical. Mm. And the Bible does not divorce these things. We might put different categories on it to kind of understand what box it fits in, but sure. it's never divorced because sometimes what happens is we can, we can lose sight on the, big, on the big picture of who God is and his character and the things he's calling us to, and then what quickly follows is we stop acting like he tells us to sure. because we've lost sight of the bigger picture of these things mm -hmm. because who God is and his character and his plan of redemption give context and give meaning to these things that we participate in and the things that we do. Mm. So a lot of times um, we hear phrases in today's society um, that refer to in the Bible and they're saying like, well, sure. how does this apply to me? How can I do this? Or how does my spiritual walk look like, right? Yeah. And I think we can lose sight, like you said, of who God is, is the most important part yeah. of this. It's it's what makes Christianity a fundamental faith that we can even believe in. Sure. Because God is who he is, because he's done what he's done, gives us the foundation of our faith. And so knowing what that is, 
is the only way that we're able to go about this in, in the right way, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that question of, you know, how does this work out? What does this look like is, is an absolutely wonderful question because sure. otherwise the study of God lives in a library yeah. and the, the study of God <laughs> should bust out into the world and invade it and disrupt it in beautiful and wonderful ways. Mm. But we still have to ask the question of who is God? And I, I would encourage us as we read the Bible, we shouldn't become so self-focused because the Bible's not about us. The Bible's yes. about God. Mm -hmm. And we need to ask, what is this saying about God? Mm -hmm. What does this say about who he is? How can I magnify him and make him great? And then what are the ramifications for me? We've got to put God first and us second, and we've got to keep that in order. Sure. So if you don't mind, sure. practically, as someone who's learning more about theology, trying to dive deeper into what this means, what are some practical things that I can do to study this more in my sure. personal study? Sure. Well, I think one of the, the, the most important things we can do is obviously just begins with Bible study okay. of a reading. And, and sometimes it's, it's really easy when you're kind of getting started as a Christian, kind of reading the Bible, to just read the things that are easy mm. and the things that are fun. You know, <laughs> in, a, in Hebrews it talks about how there's, there's kind of different levels of Christian teaching, yeah. how there's, you know, your basics, which are more like milk, and then you've got some of the deep things of God, which are, which are more like meat. And we have to grow in maturity. Mm. But it's really easy to want to stay on the milk yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. It's really easy to want to stay on the things that are sweet. And I, you know, don't get me wrong, I love cake, I love <laughs> sweets, but if I only have that, I'm going to be spiritually malnourished. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be unhealthy. And so as we're reading the Bible, let's not just go to the things that we like and the things that are easy. Let's continue to, to look at what God unveils for us to see. And let's not just shy away from things because we're not really comfortable with sure. them. We need to be willing to lean into the difficulties of this because sometimes the answers aren't always pretty. Mm -hmm. And as you understand things, you go from a sense of clarity and simplicity, and as you kind of untangle it, it gets a whole lot messier. But on the other side of that, again, often is clarity mm -hmm. and simplicity. The next thing that I think is really important too with that is you have to do this in community, <laughs> okay? Um, people who have read their Bibles by themselves and gotten ideas about God and locked themselves in their libraries <laughs> come up with very disjointed and mm. and um, false representations of who God is. That's, sure. that's how a lot of false doctrines happen in the yeah. Bible itself. Mm -hmm. And so we need to do this in community. So talk to your sisters and your brothers and your elders and ask questions. Um, God's not afraid of your questions. <laughs> and the Bible has answers to ones that are important. Mm. What do you think? What else? Yeah, I mean, I think... Summarizing those two points is really good. It helps me a lot to put it in practical terms so that I don't need to shy away from what might be difficult, but understand that God has written who he is and what he wants me to know and understand in the Bible. And so if I just shy away from the things that might seem difficult, I'm not going to really fully get to grasp that theology, sure. if you will, right? And two, having that community... I think it's really easy to to want to try to do this on our own, mm. if you will. It's really easy for me to be kind of prideful about it and yeah. be like, well, you know, I want to be, seem like I'm smart too. Sure. Um, but admitting that, you know, hey, I need help with this. Yeah. That's what God designed the church for, the body, to be helpers in each other to the wisdom that we can learn from, from the Bible. Absolutely. And, and I think one of the things that goes with that is is we want to say, well, I want to have convictions for myself. Mm. And that's really important. And I think there's a, there's a subtlety here where we can think that, oh, if I get it from somebody else, then I don't really believe it. And that's just that's just not the case. That's just yeah. a lie that we can, we can trick ourselves into. Now, we don't want to just hear things and just believe it because it's what sure. somebody else says. Right. We want to believe it because it's what the Bible says. Mm. Um, but it's not dishonest to find the answers from other people. Because here's the thing. As you grow and develop and study theology and study the Bible more, you'll come across questions that are kind of the same questions that people have been asking for a long time. People have been asking the question of how can it be that God is all powerful and all just and all loving all at the same mm -hmm. time? Um, the one of the question, can God make a rock so big he can't move it? Basically, everybody's asked that question. Right. How can it be that Jesus is fully God and fully man? And why would that even need to be the case? And that mystery is a wonderful thing. And people have thought about those questions for a long time. And we have some wonderful answers that give right. us further insight into God. And so let's go draw upon the, the wealth of spiritual knowledge of our sisters and brothers and to lean in and to understand that. Right. So don't, what I'm hearing you say is, um, don't get a big head, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Don't think that you've got all the answers mm. by yourself and that you're going to find all the answers mm. by yourself because people have walked this spiritual road, this, this pursuit of spirituality for a long time. And so let's draw on that wealth of the history of the Christian mm. tradition. Yeah. So thank you for your insight on, sure. on this difficult but important topic. Absolutely. Um, and we, we need to certainly see, seek this out more in our personal lives, but together as a community. So thank you for joining us today. Thanks.